Welcome to episode 5 of the Crackpot Podcast with James LaFond and Lynn Lockhart. This episode was taped July 11th and will be presented in five parts. You are listening to part 1. Welcome everyone to episode 5 of the Crackpot Podcast with James LaFond and Lynn Lockhart. We have uh, just finished posting episode one, which appeared in four parts, and we're here taping episode five, so you know there's more to come, and I will get busy editing and uploading those soon. James, thank you for calling today. I think we have... You're welcome. Yeah, we have some good things to talk about. Uh, Your interview with Kevin Michael Grace is receiving uh, warm praise on Twitter and on YouTube. Would you like me to read you some of the tweets that you have received? Yes. (laughs) All right. I'll read from Bumbling American. Bumbling American says, Another absolutely terrific episode of Two Kevins, The Abyss of Baltimore, and How We're All Staring Into It. I like that. I think it's accurate. I think so, too. I think that, you know, we talk about that you're a prophet from the future. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) we have to see what's coming. Um, Here's one from Wildgraph on Twitter. Great interview with excellent but unknown American writer. So maybe you'll be a little bit less unknown soon here. Uh, th- that's making me kind of nervous. <laughs> you know, I uh, I don't want my roommate's house to get burned down. So uh, my relative anonymity has uh, saved him thus far. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I think that maybe this new exposure is, um, I don't know, it's mostly towards the right at this point, mostly supporters. I haven't seen... Uh, any kind of hate coming out yet, but I'm sure it will follow. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have from the hard right the Twitter handle. Uh, James LaFond is an outstanding podcast guest. Absolutely fascinating. I could listen to him talk for hours. Oh, That's a well, good one. That's very kind. It's very kind. And he's lucky because you can talk for hours. Yes, one of my flaws. <laughs> no, it's, I think. It's, when you spend your life with idiots and you never really have anybody to talk to, well, once you run into somebody with a brain and a set of ears, it's, it's kind of hard to keep quiet. I was going to say that I kind of detected a little bit of that because you were kind of enthusiastic to do these these podcast calls. And I know how busy you are, and so I thought maybe that you're getting a little therapy out of this or something like that. It, when I do a call, I always feel more energized for writing afterwards. Oh. I thought it would tire me out because I've, I've never really felt comfortable talking to more than one person, but... This hasn't bothered me the way I thought it would. I guess because I'm not in front of a group of people. I'm just talking to one person, and then other people are, are listening to it later. I guess that's how that yeah. works. It's kind of a combo feeling because you, you know that people are going to listen, but they're not listening right now, so we can just chat. Um, Katie McHugh. Katie, Katie McHugh writes, she, this is a, she's a journalist that was the last interview that Kevin Michael Grace did right before your interview. I saw her interview. Yeah. That's the brown hair and she has huge eyes. She's yeah, real, pretty real girl. big dark eyes. Yes. Yeah. And she says, this is one of the most fascinating interviews I've ever heard. Please do a follow-up, she says to Kevin Michael Grace. And then you had a comment this morning that you thought she should interview Big Ron. <laughs> Absolutely. I, th- I think Ron would like that. 
if she thinks I'm interesting, I'm sure she'll think he's interesting. <laughs> I think he could make uh, Katie feel much better about her recent misfortune with getting fired from Breitbart. Um, Ron's very good at helping girls get over rough spots in their life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He knows just what to what to say, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying to help you out, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Does Ron listen? Has he listened to the podcast? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he likes them. And then, in response to Katie, Jay Rocker, which I think he's he's trying to use the avatar of John Rocker, who was that baseball player that got in trouble years and years ago for talking about the the New York City subway. Do you remember that story? No, I don't. He said that writing... Sorry, John Rocker was a baseball player and he was quoted in an interview saying that uh, riding the subway in New York City is like being in Beirut and he kind of talked about the different characters in there, foreigners and single moms and things like that and he got in big trouble for uh, being insensitive. But that was a long time ago. Ooh. Okay. I, I didn't didn't realize that a uh, baseball player had done that. Yeah, it was years ago. So anyway, and please excuse me, but I'm going to use some coarse language here. Jay Rocker writes, LaFond is like a Tarantino character if Tarantino were a shitlord. <laughs> I, I love that. Now, I'm not quite sure what a shitlord is, but if it, I, I've heard it referred to as the president of the Philippines that used to be the mayor, and he lets people throw drug dealers out of helicopters yeah. and stuff. Uh, is is that the definition of a shit word there? It or is. Or has it just been? It's part of it. There? I and I I did read a little bit about this because I thought this would come up. Um, and by the way, I drove behind a truck today that had a bumper sticker that said "Kill your local tr- drug dealer," which I've never seen. That. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the, this is this is the heart of the Bay Area where I live, San Francisco Bay Area. Pretty bold statement, but this this person, um, which is called a shitlord, I don't like saying it, um, but he, this is a person who is identified online as a person who might be um, racist or misogynist or homophobic. Or some of these other awful things that uh, and and is unafraid of expressing his thoughts online. So I don't want to tar you with any of those titles, but I think you are unafraid of expressing yourself online, and you could be perceived by some of those those uh, words if if people are inclined to. To think that I, way. I am terminally misogynistic. I do not trust women. So, so that's correct. I'm uh, not embarrassed or guilty uh, about being born Caucasian. So that does make me a racist by today's definition. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I even reproduce. <laughs> So I, I, I followed a Caucasian child, um, and I adopted another one, so I'm definitely a racist. So I guess that, that could apply to me. But you need to have some power. I don't have the Lord part. Uh, well, no, I think you do. I think that it's the power that you have online with your publishing and, and your the reach that you have to spread your hateful ideas. Oh, Oh, okay. Okay, then I'm a shit word. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I uh, I feel better. And the thing that a shit lord does is called shit posting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I have a high fiber diet as a as one of these people, correct? That's, yeah. Because and you well, so you definitely that. have the frequency, you know, that you're posting all day long or posting large large quantities and then it I don't think what you do is really that because you have pretty high quality and well thought out articles I think it once in a while you do throw something out there that you know is just going to get people riled up and that's that's what a shit post is 
I think. Oh, okay, okay. But I welcome readers or listeners to come write in and comment and and give me something to read out during a podcast if it's going to be good. You can you can correct me on that. I'm not an expert. Oh. Well, I've, I'm I'm very happy to be uh, in that category after you've explained it to me. I thank you, thank you. I'm glad that you feel good about that. <laughs> Um, so do you have anything else, any other comments? We, oh, we saw, I don't know if people saw that Kevin Steele wrote a little blog post about our, um, our technical difficulties and he really doesn't know the half of it, but I don't want to get, I don't want to get into the technical well, he, difficulties. I, I, I thought it was a nice piece he wrote and, um, he, he felt bad about possibly trashing my computer. <laughs> yeah. But I, uh, you know, the computer's old, so. Yeah. But I just want to tell listeners that here we are. We're taping episode five. I've only just finished posting episode one. And this isn't something I've ever done before. I really, the minimal competency that I have is from getting James ready to do the Kevin Michael Grace interview. So I'm absolutely amateur. And please forgive me if these uh, podcasts sound totally goofy but I think we'll get better at them and they're they're fun to do um, but they do take a little bit of time so bear that in mind so do you have any other feedback from the interview that you might want to share well we got a couple of more readers that purchased some some ebooks uh, from the site and um there was um, the the one book we discussed, When Your Food. We sold some of those also in print. So oh, some of the people uh, went and bought a few things, and they'll get to find out that uh, what they thought was outrageous on the podcast was just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're, they're buying When Your Food. And, uh, you know, that was... I think most of that book was pretty insane. It was, yeah. Um, and I read that book recently, and I don't have my notes in front of me, but that's something we can probably get into for our next call because I okay. hi- highlighted stuff all over that book, and uh, I'm sure you have you could expand on some of the things that you talked about in there. Thank you for listening to part one of episode five of the Crackpot Podcast with James LaFond and Lynn Lockhart.